This is Adrian with ProjectRamos.com. On this channel, we do tech reviews and gear reviews. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Today, we're going to be reviewing a 360 degree camera, the MySphere Camera Kit by Xiaomi. Before we get into the unboxing of this camera, let's go over some of the features. This camera features dual 190 degree fisheye lenses with a wide f 2.0 aperture. It also has dual Sony sensors, 60 megapixels each, which give you a combined resolution of 6912 by 3456 in full view image, which is equivalent to 7K. In video recording, it gives you a resolution of 3456 by 1728 at 30 frames per second and 2304 by 1152 at 60 frames per second. It also features a six axis electronic image stabilization feature it's IP67 water and dust proof resistant. It has an internal battery. It's a 1600 milliamp hour battery. And the dimensions are three inch by 2.65 inch by 0.94 inch. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the unboxing of this camera. Right. Camera's protected really well. Has a foam right in the uh, lid there. The camera lens is protected with the uh, plastic cover there. And here's the camera, front and back. Okay, it's got a record button here. Looks like uh, dual microphones, possibly. Uh, power button, Wi Fi button. Uh, let's see here. It's got a quarter inch mount. And okay, so it has the connection for USB right there and also that's where the uh, SD card goes and that is pretty much it there it's very light compact and it feels really really sturdy really nice there all right so inside the box let's see what we've got inside we get a little tripod a mini tripod Okay, and we also get a little instruction book here. Uh, looks like it is not in English. Not sure which language this is. Okay, get a little protective carrying case and the USB cord to be able to charge up the camera. And I also like to uh, note that the camera also came with a selfie stick, okay? And it also came with a memory card, 32 gig, which is really good. And this is the box that it was shipped in. Now, full disclosure here, um, I'm not being paid to make this video here or this product review, uh, the camera, or the uh, camera manufacturer Xiaomi reached out and sent me this camera for an unbiased review and that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to test out the camera, test out the uh, video quality, photo qual quality and um, test it in a little bit of low lighting and also um, outdoor and see what kind of uh, results we can get out of this camera. So stick around and we'll be right back. And we're back. We had a few days to test out this camera and we came up with some pros and some cons. So let's go over the pros. First off, this camera takes excellent video and photos. It produces decent low light images, which you can't expect much from a camera that has small sensors like this. However, this one produces very good images and low lighting, at least good enough to be able to use them. The audio that this camera captures is very clear and being that it features two microphones, one on the left, one on the right, it's capturing the audio in stereo. Therefore, if you're uh, more towards the left side of the camera, it, you know, uh, audio wise, it's going to be able to give you that impression that you are on the left side and vice versa. If you're more on the right side, you're going to be able to hear that in the audio. And the second thing about the audio is that it also picks up faint really low sources even sources that are far away it'll still pick that up on the microphones
The camera is easy to operate. In terms of using this camera with the uh, built-in buttons, there's three basic buttons here. One for power, one for Wi-Fi, and one to record. And once you do get this camera to turn on, there are two LEDs here. And the first one that lights up here, that indicates that it's in video record mode. You hit the power button once, and that'll switch it over to the photo mode. And whichever mode that you're in, whether it's photo or video, all you gotta do is hit the record button once, and you will notice that in video mode, it'll turn red. That will let you know that it's recording uh, video. And hit the record button again to stop it. Hit the mode button to switch over to camera mode. Hit the record button, it takes a photo, and it's a done deal. The Wi-Fi button, all you gotta do is just push it once, and that the blue uh, flashing light will indicate that the uh, Wi-Fi signal is being uh, put out from the camera from which you can use your phone to connect to it uh, via Wi-Fi. So as far as operating it with these buttons, it's very simple to use. This camera also has an LED for the battery meter which shows you if the battery is uh, full or when the camera goes into sleep mode it'll do exactly what it's doing right now. It'll pulsate to let you know it's in sleep mode. And to be able to wake it up all you gotta do is just hit the power button real quick and that'll put it back in active mode. One of the other features that this camera has is a companion app that's available for both iOS and Android. With the companion app, what you're going to be able to do is essentially use the app once you connect the uh, camera via Wi-Fi to your phone, use the app as a remote control to be able to shoot photos or uh, initiate recordings. One of the things you can do with the app is you can take the media on the camera and transfer it over to the app. Now, keep in mind the media, once it's transferred over, it's in the app but it's not available in your either, well, if you're on iOS, it's your camera roll. If you're on Android, it's your gallery. It's not available there yet. So what you'll need to do is use the app to then export it from the app to your camera roll or gallery. And when you do the export function, what it does is it stitches the photo or video together. And then once it's done stitching, it will be available in your camera roll or gallery. There is one difference between the Android app and the iOS app. And this is true as of version 1.7.1 for the Android app and 1.7.0 on the iPhone app. On the Android app, when you export either photos or video out of the app to your gallery, the app will stitch the image or video together and it will also inject the 360 metadata that social media uh, platforms need to be able to recognize it as a 360 media file. Now on the iOS side, on photos, it'll stitch it together and add the 360 metadata just like the Android app. However, the video, it will stitch it together but it doesn't inject the 360 metadata. Now what that means is that once you do export it into your camera roll on iOS, you're going to have to use a third-party app either on iOS um, or transfer it over to your computer and use a third-party app to inject the 360 metadata so that social media uh, platforms will be able to recognize it as a 360 video file. There are some available out there. On iOS, there's VR Fix, And as far as a computer on both PC and Mac, the, uh, you can just use the YouTube 360 metadata injector. The app also allows you to share directly to social media. What it does is it takes your media file and it uploads it to a server, the manufacturer server. Then it creates a link and it takes that link and it posts that to your social media account, whether it's Facebook, um, Twitter, or, and you know a few others that it has built in. The drawback by doing that is that it posts a link to the media file, which means that it's not gonna show up natively. People are not gonna know that it's a, um, a 360 uh, you know, video or photo. They're gonna have to click the link then the link opens up in a browser and then they'll be able to see what it is. So that's not the ideal way, you know, way to do it. Really the way you want to do it is have it show up natively. Uh, so even though it has it built in, the option is there if you'd rather use it that way. But I don't think uh, that's the, um, the best way to do it. All right, let's go over some of the cons. 
This camera has a square design, which is very nice. It's sleek, compact, and also lightweight, and it's built very well, very sturdy. The drawback with this design is that if you put this down on the, on the table, you gotta be very careful that you balance it right. And you gotta be careful that you don't hit the table or that something or someone doesn't run into the table because this thing can easily tip over this way or that way and as soon as this thing tips over now you're in danger of damaging the lenses that's the only drawback that I see in terms of design um, I would recommend just keeping the uh, the tripod that they include if you're gonna set it down on the table because it's a lot more sturdy this way you know it's it's a little more difficult to tip this thing over you can still tip it over you know if you hit it hard enough but that would be true with any any device uh, but this one in particular you know if you keep it on the on the tripod that the manufacturer includes and I think you will be safer that way otherwise if you're not gonna have it on the tripod definitely make use of the pouch that they include to be able to uh, protect the camera at all times the second drawback that I found about this camera is that the manufacturer does not include a desktop app and the reason I find that uh, to be something that would be beneficial is the fact that 360 video does take up a, you know, uh, does create big files and moving them over Wi-Fi, you know, if it's just one small video clip, not a problem, it'll transfer it quickly. The problem is if you have several video clips and photos that you want to transfer over, it can take several minutes. Now, if one of your, one of your videos that you shot, if that thing is, let's say, 10, 15 minutes long, it's going to take a lot longer to transfer it over through Wi-Fi. So it would be beneficial if the manufacturer had a desktop app where you can take the SD card, put that into your computer, transfer the files over quickly, and then be able to process them with a uh, native desktop app made by the manufacturer. But being that they don't have one available yet, uh, that is a con that I see because now you're forced to use a mobile app, which means that in a way you're kind of forced to use or to transfer over the files through Wi-Fi. There is a workaround, um, however, it, it is going to require you to buy an SD card reader. They do make them for both uh, iPhone and Android devices. So basically it's a card reader that hooks up to your phone so you can take the SD card out, pop it into the card reader, connect it to your phone, and the, um, the app has an import function so all you got to do is hit the import and navigate over to the SD card import all the files into the app and which it should be able to do that very quickly and once you have them on the app you can process them and export them out as needed overall I think this camera produces good quality photos and video it does well in low light and as far as the iOS app is concerned uh, with it not exporting the uh, videos without um, the 360 metadata that's something that the manufacturer can easily fix on a future app update and as far as the desktop app not being available again that's something that the manufacturer could take some time and produce one so that in the future uh, it'll make things a lot easier for the consumer this camera is something that can produce very creative and overall fun photos and video it's something that can be easily carried and the app makes it convenient to use. At the time of this review, the Xiaomi Mi Sphere camera kit sells for $254 US and I think this is a buy. The camera is fun to use and produces good quality media and it just works. That's going to complete my review of the Xiaomi Mi Sphere camera kit. Definitely subscribe for more videos like this and give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Let me know in the comments if you would like me to create a video showing the details of what the app can do, all the different creative things that you can produce with it, and I'll try to put one out as soon as possible. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next review.